Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for another presentation. In the gameplay criticism video, I presented three interconnected core issues that encompass pretty much every problem with the gameplay of Path of Exile. I'll admit that it seems a little strange for one of these issues in particular to stand out sorely if they're all supposed to be connected. But I mean, if you want to start a fight over the internet, just mention the XP penalty. I think the community overwhelmingly agrees that face rolling and rate wars are a problem, one way or another. A game should not be designed around damage spikes and overtuned life recovery that oversimplifies it to the point where everybody just spams one ability that solves all their problems while neurotically jiggling around hoping they don't get one shot. Especially one with this kind of custom potential. I'm paraphrasing of course, but overall there's not much controversy anywhere but here. I figure with PoE2 on the horizon, there's no better time to focus on the most contentious corner. I think the contention, like many things, comes from a miscommunication. The idea of a penalty, what a penalty is expected to do, is not the same as the reality of a penalty, what it actually does. Because the penalty itself is so mechanically simple, we have to add a bunch of context in order to talk about it, and we end up getting lost in the context and talking past each other. I intend to connect the idea to the reality. Let me be crystal clear. I am not advocating the removal of all penalties. I don't think anybody is, but rather that we consider the far-reaching impact that they have on the rest of the game. Many will deny the connection, and the developers seem to be among them. The XP penalty hasn't been raised, lowered, or adjusted in any way since it was imported from Diablo 2 many years ago. Every other mechanic has been tirelessly worked and reworked, tweaked and tinkered with, which is commendable, but not this one. Why? Why is this concept not on the table like every other? I can only assume it's because of the controversy over it. Well, let's put the pieces together. If I fail to mention your favorite argument, please let me know in the comments. This is an analysis of the XP penalty. First, what are penalties for in video games? As covered in my penalties video, there are exactly three purposes. Challenge, making the game harder, conditioning, teaching the player, and thrill, the adrenaline rush of danger avoidance. Penalties can make things more difficult if they disincentivize easy choices and leave the harder ones. To this end, once the penalty is large enough to prevent progress, any higher penalty will have no effect on difficulty. At best, penalties have an important but rapidly diminishing effect on difficulty in a game. For example, dying in the labyrinth forces you to start over, so you simply cannot progress if you die. Losing XP on top of this contributes nothing more to the difficulty of completing the labyrinth. But you could even argue that maxing out a penalty isn't ideal either. Sometimes the penalty can limit player options too much or rule out the hard builds and leave the easy ones. For example, if someone wants to play a build that already progresses very slowly through the game, a penalty might completely lock them in place. The advice these players get is to choose a build that face rolls content so fast that death either doesn't happen or doesn't matter. It's almost like the game isn't appropriately challenging, despite the XP penalty. What, should we increase it more? Or should we admit that it's merely a distraction from the vacuous gameplay? Penalties can condition player behavior by teaching them to avoid things, but only if they can clearly see the connection between their actions and the penalty. If players cannot see what is happening, if their top-end graphics hardware is just spitting out pixel cancer, that's the end of our analysis. Penalties teach nothing if players can't tell what caused it, period. In the same vein, with no combat log or death log, once again, that's the end of our analysis. And no, a death log would not be hard to implement. Here, check this out. This is your health meter. Now I know it spends all of its time either completely full or completely empty, but trust me, it can actually be in the middle. See that? It's almost like this thing that's already in the game, somehow remembers how much damage it took. Now imagine taking this amazing technology and storing it somewhere else. Lastly, Alt F4, simulating a disconnect from the game, makes any penalty for death into a penalty for not disconnecting fast enough, and once again, that's the end of our analysis. Simulating a disconnect is not a feature, 
and it doesn't matter whether the entire development team pretends that it is. If it were a feature, it would be on your skill bar, a button that instantly teleports you to town no matter the circumstance. That's what a feature would look like. Punishment also needs to be consistent if you want to use it as a teaching tool. This means it needs to always matter. It can't be meaningless before beating Kitava or when you have no level XP or when you're smashing content so fast it's irrelevant. Penalties can make a game thrilling by making the player anticipate the closeness of the penalty and get the same kind of adrenaline rush out of it as riding a roller coaster or bungee jumping. However, death doesn't have to be the only source of thrill. For example, reaching a quest time limit, the Iker pump being destroyed, getting max alert before reaching the heist objective, can all generate thrill. On top of this, most players experience frustration rather than thrill from excessive slash unfair penalties. And honestly, frustration is at least as valid a concern as thrill all by itself. Fortunately, death thrill seekers already have a game mode made especially for them, in the form of hardcore. So, back to the forums. When someone posts a complaint about the XP penalty, a lot of responses will be, Oh my god, get good! I never die! Look how skilled I am at video games! Oh yeah, I have seven level 100s that I made on the first day of League! It was so easy, death penalty is fine! Which, of course, is great for demonstrating one's narcissistic personality checklist over the internet, but not so great at actually responding. Eventually, these comments will give way to the more constructive variety, Well, just don't die! Which is nice, but again, misses the point. If someone is saying the penalty for pressing this button makes no sense, and you respond with, just don't press the button, you haven't really responded. Pressing or not pressing isn't the issue. The button will be pressed. The death penalty is small potatoes if you have a good build. It is indeed possible to inoculate oneself against the penalty, and the availability of that inoculation has consequences. We're forced to define a good build as one that completely betrays the complexity of the game, and you've hit the nail on the head. We need the death penalty to punish mistakes. Sure, but we would have to constantly shift our definition of mistake to justify the times when a player is punished for no mistake, or not punished for a mistake. Because of the rate war, most deaths happen, let's say, very fast. This can be a better predictor of how dead you are than this. So even if the penalty were 100% efficacious, a split-second mistake that costs the last X hours is a challenge to justify. We have to move the goalpost and say something like, well, that was just the game telling you to fix something, Apparently we're clairvoyant now. Guys, we need a punishment for mistakes, but how about we admit when the shoe doesn't fit? It stops glass cannons. You mean the playstyle where you destroy enemies fast but are prone to being destroyed fast yourself? You mean every mainstream build? You mean the meta builds with infantile one-button playstyles that clear everything the same way? If glass cannons are bad, what the heck is this? It limits build choices. Well, it sure does. That should be a good thing, but it apparently limits builds to the ones that can face roll without risk. The easiest builds are the ones that are the most rewarding, which is probably not what you meant. Not to mention, the death penalty only kicks in after players have made a bunch of build choices, so you're literally teaching new players not to care about death. Anybody want to explain this? If we get rid of the penalty, everybody would be level 100. First of all, nobody wants to wholesale eliminate all penalties, but let's say you're right, everybody would be level 100. That implies the death penalty was all that held people back, and that the game had no technical challenge beyond that. We're on the same side then. How do you know whether the XP penalty is working? This question was the point of the What Are Our Standards video. I get the impression that defending the penalty at all costs had become the name of the game, Anybody can assert that the death penalty serves all these purposes, but if you, for example, reviewed a recording of your last 20 deaths, I'll bet somewhere close to 0% of the time it actually did. Until players can see the game, until there's a combat log, until Alt F4 is no longer a thing, until damage bikes are no longer the primary source of the penalty, until face rolling is no longer the primary mode of avoiding the penalty, there's no serious argument. If we ignore all that, which we have to, or this video would have been 10 seconds long, we may agree on what we want a penalty to accomplish,
But unless we're living in fantasy land, this penalty is always too small or too large. It's both big and small potatoes. It never fits the circumstance. It's the wrong kind of system. Think about how your values change if you care about gaining XP, which is something you can't directly trade for. If you have any weaknesses whatsoever, if your life meter is jumping around, if you have to pay attention, if you can't reduce the game to a grind, you're doing it wrong. Only when you don't care about XP do you do anything challenging. You, the developers, are prevented from making the difficulty of the game match the incredible build system. I don't know how this can be more obvious. Path of Exile is better off expanding checkpoint penalties like limited portals, limited attempts, and with other types of failure, time limits, bonus objectives, survival XP, etc., and crank up the challenge once we stop pretending a penalty can substitute for it. I can't imagine a more atrocious violation of what this game could and should be than this. I hope you can see that penalties are candidates for change, just like everything else. We need to be able, as a community, to talk about the XP penalty in the same breath as its other problems, because they're all the same problem. The XP penalty has been defended in the absence of reason, against all reason, not from any higher standard or principle, but as dogma, thoughtlessly imported from Diablo II. Diablo dogma may actually be the cancer that's preserving each of the core problems and beyond. POE is an example of how catastrophic choosing the wrong dogma can be, and to be fair, of how amazing and dedicated the developers and the community have been to create one of the best games of all time, in spite of it. The example is death penalties. We have death penalties in Path of Exile. No one's complaining about them.